Cal State San Bernardino's College of Business and Public Administration was just recognized by European CEO Magazine as one of the top 22 schools of business in the world. This Global Business Education Award recognizes the world's leading centers of excellence. On this segment of Today's Inland Empire, we will be talking with Dr. Karen Dill Bowerman and some of her professors about their program. California State University San Bernardino is, is such a beautiful campus. Uh, we have about 17,000 students total on our campus with uh, about 3,500 just in this College of Business and Public Administration. And that includes about 600 that are in our graduate programs in both business and uh, public administration. There was a, it was a few months ago that I received a call from the prestigious magazine, European CEO, that we had been nominated as one of the top business schools in the world. Well, this was the first year I learned that they had done this particular set of awards, and they did it for the purpose of giving feedback to the European CEOs, their readers. They know, of course, that ex education and, and uh, development, professional development of executives is of great concern to CEOs because of the need for their leaders to be educated to the very highest possible standards. In recognizing Cal State's MBA program as one of the top 22 uh, centers of, of excellence in the world, they used uh, over a dozen criteria, and, and I'll mention just a few of them. One was value for the money. Uh, knowing the program cost, they balanced that with what we value in our education delivery. Diversity was one of the issues that they looked at, including multicultural diversity for starters. Um, with our three graduate programs, we enjoy uh, about 12% African American students, about 20% Latino, about 7% Asian, and 22% international. Another criterion was the student pr uh, to professor ratio which our overall ratio is 22 to 1, although there is a great deal of variation in the classes depending on the pedagogy for that class. Training and technology was another. Although technology is required of all students, we also have a nationally recognized program in information security with curriculum mapped to that of the Department of Defense, Homeland Security, and so on. Accreditation is a major criterion. There are 600 AACSB International, which is the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, uh, accredited schools in 37 different countries, of which we are, of course, one. We enjoy sharing our vision for education and professional development. First and foremost is that uh, our mission is to provide a student-centered learning community where our students become future leaders, uh, not only regionally but also internationally. What we do is we align our resources to not only our educational needs but also to the needs of both students and faculty. I would like to say that uh, we put our resources where our hearts are. There are a number of resources that are available you know, for our students. The first one is what we call research grants. Okay, and they, are, they come in three flavors. The first flavor is what we call faculty student research. Faculty and students work together and although faculty will be the lead, students also participate by collecting data and also doing the data analysis. So it's beneficial also you know, to the student. The second one is what we call student faculty research. This is student-led and the faculty just provides guidance. And the last one is what we call merit fellowships. We provide, provide that to uh, new students come into our program and uh, we want to support in their research. And usually it's one year, but we can extend it to two years depending on how successful they are. This event has been a joy to be a part of from the very beginning. And it's really, it's not about me, it's not really about the Center for Entrepreneurship, it's really about the community. And I said, you know, we should pick up the ball and do something to recognize local entrepreneurs, give our students somebody to, to see as heroes, because they don't always know who you are. A fast pitch is a 90 second description 
of a business concept that savvy entrepreneurs present to investors in an effort to get their support and investment. It's the fast pitch that when you land as an entrepreneur in that elevator, in that rare instance where you're standing next to, to Steve Jobs or somebody of that nature and you want to tell them your plan and you have 90 seconds to do it. That's what a fast pitch is. In 1984, Alan Newton received a 40-year prison sentence for a crime he did not commit. Could you imagine spending decades in jail for something you didn't do? Cases such as Mr. Newton's occurred partially because the current process of collecting and registering samples for use as evidence is outdated and error prone. Good evening, I am Michael Fisher, founder of Sample Solutions, and we can solve many of these problems with one device. Developed at Los Alamos National Laboratory, the Sample Collector Pro allows a single user to collect samples of any type and register data electronically. Agencies will no longer need to maintain a fleet of specialized equipment. Field data can be acquired 10 times faster than with current methods. Required staff can be reduced by 50%, and the risk of contamination is greatly minimized. MBA is a professional degree. In our MBA program, we use a balanced approach to help our students grow academically and professionally. And we prepare our students in a holistic educational manner that focuses on leadership, entrepreneurship, innovation, and problem solving. Our main mission is to create a student-centered learning community that prepares students to become productive members in business, government, and global society. We intend to positively contribute to our students' development as professionals. Our motto is E to the power of three, engage, execute, excel, i.e., we establish an infrastructure that students engage, execute, excel. Uh, this is how we do it. Students are engaged starting from the recruitment, selection, admission, learning when they are here, graduation to post-graduation. So when students join our program, they share with us their career and professional development aspirations. With our initial assessment of their current knowledge, skills, aptitudes, ability, and technology tools they can use. An individualized profile for each student is developed at that point. We then guide the students through our programs to cross the gaps. Graduate faculty have access to the students' learning needs and are able to strategically use that information to guide the students in classroom deliberations, off-campus assignments or off-class assignments, and in mentorship sessions. Internship and graduate assistantships are aligned to the students' career aspirations and professional development needs. The goal is to make sure that the student is well prepared to realize their dreams upon graduation. This course is about uh, knowing why India has become such a hot emerging market right now. And uh, after the course, students are going to walk away with a good understanding of Indian historical, cultural, and business context. Uh, this course is structured to bring in a variety of learning approaches into the classroom. First, we have face-to-face -face discussion of a range of readings about India. Uh, with a lot of guest speakers. Uh, then we have an online reflection with students in Colombia, uh, Bogota, Colombia, uh, about Indian culture. Uh, then we are going to actually do a very interesting project. And this project is about a leading rugs manufacturer in India, uh, which makes handspun rugs. So the students are going to go, and they're going to be mentored by the executives there. And uh, you're going to see uh, the rural supply chain of this company. You're going to see how this company does designs, uh, the finishing, and the office uh, in terms of their international business management. And uh, students are then going to write a sustainability analysis of uh, this company's impact socially and ecologically on the rural villages. 
uh, the students are going to do a sustainability impact analysis for this company, which actually this company is planning to use uh, for a report to Planning Commission of India. This course will impact uh, the businesses of this region in a significant way. There are a lot of companies in San Bernardino region which are already beginning to do business with China. They are interested in finding resources and who can help them open new markets in India. So if you have gone to this course, then you will gain confidence and knowledge uh, to be able to lead and champion uh, India initiative in these companies.